Indeed, this is very, very special. Aloha, I'm Kimo Hussey, and I'm here with a very, very good friend of mine. Aloha, Grant Keeler. A real honor to be here with this crew, the ukulele friend. <laughs> and we're we're very, very excited because there's there there's several wonderful, wonderful things uh, uh, we plan to do uh, in this session. Uh, the main purpose of this session is is education and has as it has to do with quality ukulele. One of the one of the several special things uh, we have is three or our three ukuleles built by Eric Divine. We have we have this one, we have this one, and we have that one, and we'll get uh, we'll get to these uh, instruments in just a second. But first, we want to talk about people. Uh, and the first thing I want to talk about uh, to you, Grant, is actually you. Let's, let's talk about you first. How did you How did you get interested in ukulele, and how long have you been playing ukulele? Oh, that's a, a great story, and I'm glad that we went down that path, because there's loads of different discussions that we could have that shouldn't be on camera. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know uh, before we get to your story, uh, I noticed that uh, your speech is a little bit different. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Houston, Texas. Ah. I'm a Texan. Via. Via. <laughs> <I'm> Scottish. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm an, an implant in Houston. I've been there for 15 years, but as you can tell by my smooth Texas drawl, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually from Scotland, okay? And so, Kimo's going to translate just in case there's words that people don't understand which is common when I speak to people. Anyway, back to the, <laughs> back to the story. Uh, I renewed my wedding vows probably 10 years ago in the Big Island, and it was a secret. Oh. And we were on the beach, and I had it all set up. A secret to whom? Your, your my, wife my, at the time? My, your ex, wife? my ex-wife. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so, but anyhow, uh, I had a guy who was doing the ceremony, and from behind a palm tree came this young kid playing beautiful, beautiful Hawaiian music on a ukulele. And I'd, I would, I'd been a failed guitar player my whole life, right? One of those typical people who are just a failed guitar <laughs> player, right? And they spend their whole life with a guitar sitting in the corner of their house somewhere gathering dust. And I, I picked up that ukulele and it was like, hey. So I went into a shop the next day. From this I, guy that was at the beach? I, so I grabbed it and they said, yeah. here's a chord. And I went into the shop in the big island the next day and. I was like, oh wow, look, I can actually play this easily. So I was playing the three usual chords, you know, C, F, and G. Yeah. And within minutes, and I thought, I need to buy one of those. And so that's how I fell in love with the ukulele. Great. And, and then I met you, and then nothing but trouble happened after that chemo. Yeah, but it was fun while it lasted, right? <laughs> it still is. <laughs> still, still, still is. It's been a mm. wonderful roller coaster, you know. I mean, yeah. look at what we're doing today. This, this is, this is um, amazing. Can can you tell us what it is about ukulele that you enjoy? the the reason why, The reason why I ask is, is, it's it's always nice I think when we're able to share in ukulele and share ukulele in a way that that doesn't come across as a responsibility for people to learn to play just because just because we love ukulele. Uh, so tell us what it is about ukulele that you enjoy. So I think this is going to be the thread of our discussion because it started off, like I said, with the ease of playing and how quick you could make music and how much fun it is. And most people smile when they're playing the ukulele, okay? Yeah. There's not a lot of sad, bluesy type ukulele players, apart from me, but that's another story. That's the type of instruments that I'm drawn to. And so it kind of started off with this love of the ukulele. And then, you know, I was looking online and uh, came across this guy, Jay Lifty, all of a sudden. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and my daughter, she was two at the time. And there was a song he'd composed called Mackenzie. And so I sent him a message. Hey, Jay, do you think you could send me the tabs for this song, Mackenzie? And he sent back. Nope, I don't do tabs. <laughs> it's one that I've kind of just made was up he, Was he an ukulele player? He's a builder. He's one of the best builders in the world, you know. He's uh, one of the top guys. And, and yeah, I said, uh, one day, one day, Jay, 
I may have one of your beautiful ukuleles. And that was right at the beginning of my journey. By the way, I selfishly have two of his instruments at home now. But that's thanks to you also. Right, right. <laughs> that's now we'll, probably why we'll, I'm divorced. We'll get to those in just a little bit. <laughs> Help me remember, we'll get back to those okay, in just a little okay, bit. Okay. Anyway, what you enjoy about ukulele? So, nowadays, it's the quality, the sound, the looks, the beauty of them, and that brings in playability. And so, mm. you know, the, when you get to these things, not only do they look great, they play really easily. Yeah, they do. Okay? They do. And, and they make beautiful music, beautiful sound. That's what I love. It's right. the beauty. And it's the soft beauty of ukulele. That uh, draws me in. One of the things I, <clears throat> I, I really appreciate about ukulele that, uh, that uh, you've addressed a little bit uh, is uh, songs that go slow. And you know what? Even, even sad songs are very good because what the ukulele does, in my mind, the ukulele is, <clears throat> it's a catalyst. It's not the end. It's the means to the end. And, and the end can be just something as simple as in enjoyment, just enjoyment, that's all. Yeah. Uh, because one of the things that the ukulele provides people very easily is a means to express express through the instrument uh, you know using uh, using music because it just simply makes people feel good i mean one of the things i quite often do i'm an early riser and i'll get up at you know four in the morning and there's nothing better than drinking a cup of coffee and just quietly playing on an ukulele and playing beautiful music, right? right. I mean, I, I mean, it's great. It's so soothing for the soul. It sets you up for the day. It and, massages and, and your soul. It does. It does, and it tends to drag you down a path. I mean, ukulele is a really strange, uh, not instrument. It's the whole purpose around ukulele. It's kind of like a metaphor at times, because. The amount of people that are drawn to ukulele, the different types of people from, you know, different races, religions, creeds, you know, it doesn't matter. They're all pulled together by this strange little instrument, right? right? And and then people start doing good things right. around it. Right? I sure do. I mean, the amount of ukuleles that I've given away to people is unbelievable. Every time I get a new ukulele, right. uh, and I've got another one that I travel one, it's like, hey, you're going to learn to play the ukulele if they show an interest. And it, it just is weird. <laughs> that, that, I think that kind of helps capture the... One of the things you mentioned that I think is very, very good is playing very early in the morning. Yeah. Uh, and I think the reason why that's good is, uh, is, is, number one, you generally play by yourself, so it's a, a very self-reflecting time. Yeah. It's a it's a time it's a time that's really quiet, uh, and um, and because of that, because of that, you you don't you don't play forcefully early in the morning, and it's so wonderful because sometimes you know sometimes people I think make the assumption that every time you play your ukulele and especially when you play with friends. Uh, the whole purpose is is to get that adrenaline going and just go to town and beat that ukulele into submission. And you know what? There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But there is so much more to ukulele. And we're not saying that, uh, you know, the other side of ukulele that people don't do uh, is not as good. The wonderful thing about, uh, about ukulele, I think, is... Um, or call it self-choice. Be the kind of ukulele player that you prefer to be. Uh, in in my mind, in my mind, uh, a person who uh, just wants to pick his uke up once a week, uh, maybe maybe tickle the strings a little bit for fifteen or twenty minutes and put it down, is just as valid an ukulele player as a person who likes to play every day. Uh, you do you do whatever makes you feel good with the ukulele because it is so responsive, um, and in 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 that area, and and it'll help you find a lot of happiness. Actually, it takes me back to one of our 
earlier meetings that we had here in Hawaii and uh, you've actually asked me this question probably about 15 times I think and it's a great question what is it you want to do Grant what do you want to do with the ukulele what, tell me, what do you want to do? And it, it always puts me in a position where you're always challenging your thoughts. And I remember responding to you, and I'm still in that same place today. <laughs> and it's about finding a style and finding my place with the ukulele. And I think that's important for people. And so, I mean, I, I, get, I get your point. If that's playing with a group of people in Kanakapila, playing hard and fast, and they'll, and they'll love it, right. that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, people, right. but I, I'm, I'm a little more selfish because the ukulele kind of, it helps me and helps me find who I am. And I mean, the best response I think I have now, kind of looking back on the 10 years, it's it's a journey, okay? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a complete journey and it never ends. It just never, ever ends. Right. It's like some of these guys, this, this guy Divine, uh, you know, he's on a journey as a builder. And, he and, is. and his stuff just keeps getting better and better and better and, and, it, and it's phenomenal but I think a lot of ukulele players uh, get frustrated with a plateau because right. you know right right and and it's because they're stuck into this one yeah. spot yeah and I mean I think it's important for people to realize that this is a journey mm-hmm and you know you you got to work on the journey to get to where you want to be right but you've also got to know that you're heading somewhere as well that's important right. Ab absolutely <laughs> it's really important okay um um let's uh uh let's keep talking about people mm -hmm. uh because there uh, there are more people to talk about but uh but just before we do that i want to take uh um three strums here comes three strums <laughs> Give us three strums, buddy. And here come three strums on this. We just wanna we just wanna be able to put some ukulele and sound uh, into what we do. Okay, back to people. But it's funny, just while you're on that point, because you know, three divines three completely different instruments, three completely different sounds. It's phenomenal, and they're all ukuleles. <laughs> so That's right. Uh, I think the, the one thing that I would say about people, you know, if you ever get a chance to get a hold of some really high-end quality instruments, take the opportunity and play them, right? Because I think one thing that I experienced early on uh, you know, you get this ukulele acquisition syndrome. <laughs> Everybody's got it, right? <clears throat> and so when you're on that start of your journey, you, you, you can buy a hundred dollar, and there's, I'm not knocking this, not one bit, but listen to the end of the message here. So you buy one hundred dollar ukulele, and then you're like, okay, I'm, I want to get better. And so you go and buy another hundred dollar ukulele and then another hundred and ten dollar ukulele thinking that there's going to be a magic sauce there right but you're only ever going to be able to play to that ook's ability so if you've mm -hmm. got ten ukuleles you'd be better buying one really good instrument <laughs> right because then the ukulele is always going to be a step ahead of you you're always going to be yeah. catching up with it and you're never going to be limited Mm -hmm. by the instrument and so sorry mm -hmm. I was I think it's just good for people to understand that no that's a uh, that's a wonderful thing and uh, uh, nowadays in ukulele as ukulele continues to mature there are so many new builders who are making very very high quality instruments oh, yeah. that uh, uh, the the situation market-wise with ukulele players is a lot of ukulele players are unfamiliar with things of quality uh, in ukuleles that can help them become better players uh, and that's the reason why we do very special things like we do so I want to continue on and talk about um, people and the next person who want to talk about is Eric Devine so <laughs> He's uh, trouble. 
Yeah. <laughs> He's just trouble. Uh, tell us, since you're the guest of honor, how did, how did you get to, to meet Eric? Do you know him? I know Eric very well now. In a short space of time, we got to know one another and uh, become good friends. I mean, he's, he's a great, great guy, great family guy. And he's one of the interesting kind of epiphanies that I came over when I kind of met a number of different builders that are out there. Because mm -hmm. they tend to be introverts. Mm -hmm. You know, they kind of lock themselves away in their workshop and they're, you know, like <laughs> working like magical <laughs> little elves and all of a sudden these wonderful instruments come out. Uh, and, and so Eric's found a spot. Uh, yeah, I mean, he he's world class. There's there's no doubt about do you, that. Do you remember, and if so, if you could tell us about uh, your first experience uh, playing or hearing uh, an ukulele built by Eric, and because of that, got attracted to his work. <sighs> when was the first time I played? I think it was you had a divine, and uh, the th the thing about Eric's ukuleles is most people don't actually get to see or hear them, right? Mm. Because they go direct to Eric. He builds. He doesn't like build and say, "Hey, I'm going to sell some of these things." He's got an order list that's long as your arm, okay? Mm. And so most people actually don't get to play and see and hear these things because they go off and they're hidden behind closed doors. Right. So I did get to play one of yours before. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm trying to think, was it a tenor? But I remember the first time that I heard and played a divine baritone and I just started falling in love with the baritone <laughs> at that time. <laughs> right. And I, I was like, Oh my God, that thing was addictive, and 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 it, and it sometimes can you know kind of describe it as being like Xanax, because you when you're playing it you're just off in this lull, and and this going back to Eric, uh, you know the way Eric sets his instruments up and builds them, and I know now from experience mm -hmm. how they play, sound and feel the way they do, because he's building them for you, Kimo, mm -hmm. and and you know. Other builders that we know are players, and so they build them for their style, and their instruments are like that. But Eric builds for Kimo style, soft playing, and it's addictive. It's really, really addictive. It probably means, and 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 thank you for that. But it probably means that uh, he he embraces his style of of play, mm -hmm. and how he thinks an uh, instrument should uh, be played. Uh, kind of align with uh, my own thoughts, and um, you know, it's it's probably the reason why uh, why I I love his work. I've known him for years uh, now, and uh, uh, we we love to get together periodically, and uh, and and not only talk about ukulele, but do things that we think uh, we think will really really help share ukulele. It's funny you should mention that because. Eric was doing a little bit of work for me on Baby Blue here, and uh, I was chatting to him yesterday. He's going, so how is it? How's it feel? And I said, well, it's good. He said, so I left the, you know, I left the E string. I kind of left it really low action for your particular style, Grant. We can change it any time if you like, but I know how you like to play. And so oh. what's really interesting about that is when he knows who you are as a player, then he'll almost build an instrument with you in mind which is which is crazy it right is. isn't it that is. crazy and that's that's hard to do yeah i mean again it's when you asked me just strum and uh, this thing here it's still ringing <laughs> it's still you know it's crazy and uh so yeah I mean, and, here, and here comes here comes another sound that's different but just as wonderful isn't that great? Yes. Okay, we're go we're gonna get more specifically to Eric Hughes, but we wanna we wanna put bring one more person in here, and that person is you, <laughs> uh, Joe Q. Public ukulele player. Um, uh, tell us, guest of honor. Hmm. Uh, what do you think uh, can be accrued from the standpoint of uh, something that we can share 
with ukulele players out there and builders as well hmm well, first, that's one of the nicer things somebody's called me as a guest of honour. <laughs> I get called well, you a lot. Are. I get called a lot of different things in my life, but I'll take that one as a nice compliment. Well, that's because you're a Renaissance man. <laughs> <laughs> we we yeah. always get into so much trouble when we're together. But uh, I mean, again, it's one of the things I would say for people out there is. Uh, and I'm going to bring Sean into the discussion, not into the discussion, but talk about him for a minute and while he can't respond. But this is not a market ploy at all, right? right? But if you go on his site, uh, and it's the ukulele friend site, okay, dot com, and you can actually look at all these fantastic instruments that pass through his shop from all these different builders. Right. And then you've got videos of chemo playing, you've got videos of man eaters, all different folks come in and play. I mean, what I would suggest that for folks out there, for just normal people like me, that, that what to do is to, to look, to see, and to listen to the types of instruments that you're drawn to. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. and, and the type of builders that are out there and then maybe aspire to something along the way, you know? Exactly. And I talk to Sean and, you know, he's got a range of instruments and they're all great instruments, but, you know, that's the way yeah. I think that people need to kind of do this rather than mm. trying to go into a guitar center or some of these places, because you know what, guys? The, 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 and I'm not being disrespectful, but those are manufactured, you know, cheaply manufactured, brought in, and even with a professional, you know, luthier trying to get those things set up to your needs, it, it, it ain't gonna get you there. And right. so, start to listen to what you want to hear, and look at what's pretty for you, and then start heading down that path. That, that I think that was trying so, to So, absolutely. So, um, thank God, we're not here to try and and sell you an ukulele because uh, because Grant's ukuleles and mine are not <laughs> they're not for sale. Not for sale. <laughs> but we hope we hope that the fact that we're not trying to sell you an ukulele will open your mind and your heart to what these instruments are about, and they will open your heart and your mind to the kind of quality uh, that uh, that Eric puts into his ukes consistently one thing chemo uh, just to kind of wrap up on that thing but I think is important because I'm not a musician right I, I, I've got a day job my passion is around playing ukuleles and playing some musical instruments uh, and and so the message is you don't need to be the best player in the world to have a lot of fun Right? Absolutely, and to, to I mean, absolutely, music works for my soul, and so that's just the message that's out there. And so I'm, I'm quite comfortable not being the best player in the world. Okay. Okay, good for you. Uh, good for you. Okay, shall we get into some instruments? Absolutely. Let's uh, let's uh, let's start with this one. Um, there's a story uh, I would like to share with you. Uh, about uh, about this instrument and this story is so wonderful uh, <clears throat> and it starts with uh, starts with the fact that uh, this is a tenor instrument but the scale the neck this and, and the scale is the distance from here this nut uh, down to the saddle here is extended a bit it's extended about uh, 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 between one and two inches and there, there are several reasons for that. Um, one reason uh, is by extending horizontally uh, the scale, it provides the player with more room, horizontal room, uh, to play chords like up here. Uh, and one of the things we discovered uh, when, uh, when we did this extended scale uh, was that <clears throat> was that when when we tuned the ukulele uh, to G C E A G C E A? Uh, it seemed like the strings were very tight. 
Uh, and so when I went to some of my bill of friends to find out why, they said, well, uh, it's a natural thing because of the extended scale. So what I decided to do, <laughs> Uh, in order to do, in order to uh, treat that uh, uh, the tightness of the strings, was to down tune the ukulele, and that and at that point I was talking to uh, Jay Lichty, um, and we were talking about tuning sweet spots, and that is, is there such a thing as tuning sweet spots? I don't know, but what I learned just by accident was that when we tune the ukulele, uh, when we down tune the ukulele one full step from a, uh, from a C6 tuning to a B flat 6 tuning, I just love the sound. And that sound pretty much has become, uh, you know, has, has become my, my sound of choice. So basically what we did was we took this regular tuning, reduced it one full step, to, and this is G, C, E, A, to this. Beautiful. And it's like F, B flat, D, G. And again, that's F, B flat, D, G. So anyway, back to this, uh, back to this ukulele, it does have the extended scale. Uh, this top is spruce. And the sides are uh, Brazilian rosewood. Brazilian? Brazilian, Brazilian rosewood. rosewood. Yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely. The, the, the back of that is fantastic, you know, and the right. way it blends together. So that's just a little bit uh, about this ukulele. Um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take uh, we're gonna take a little break here, and when we come back, we'll start focusing on the sound of this.